All right, babe. Yeah. The birth control pill, condoms, all these different methods of contraception. How do we feel about those things? Hmm. Well, I think we have to take an episode to talk about that. So let's get into that. Let's get into that. I'm Nathan Warnock. You've joined us for Marriage Monday on the Marriage by Design podcast, and this is a time where we got to, where we get to talk to you about God's design for marriage, what the Bible says about marriage, and then how we live that out practically. That's right. So we've been doing a series on sex. Um, in fact, we just kind of wrapped that up a couple of weeks ago and transitioned from talking about sex as an institution of its own and an activity between a man and a woman who are in covenant marriage before the Lord and how, what a gift and a blessing sex really is that has been given to us. Um, but in addition to that, we wanted to transition a little bit to talk about one of the primary byproducts of sex, which is children, right? Reproduction within marriage and no doubt about it, right? This is a, really important part of what sex means to a married couple, right? I mean, God could have chosen any avenue by which we would reproduce, but he didn't choose any avenue. He chose sex. So as we think about reproduction as married couples, right? And I'm using that term. It's probably an awkward term. As we think about having babies, um, the reason I'm using the term reproduction is because the top, the title of this series, little mini series that we're doing, is called Reproductive Rights, right? Meaning, what rights with regards to reproduction do we really have as human beings before a sovereign and almighty holy God? And that's really what we've been talking about. So, last week we talked a little bit about is it okay for us as a married couple to just choose to not have children to make a choice we're not talking about people that can't have children right that's a that's sort of a a unfortunate tragic anomaly of living in a a, a world world. bound by sin but as a couple that could have children is it okay for us to choose not to and where where we come down on that no no No, and and right yeah, and if that's just a really straightforward answer for you, I'd love for you to go back to last okay, week's episode and listen to the full right discussion back. about it. So we're going to transition then today to talking about contraception. And contraception goes by a ton of different names, right? I mean, we've got the birth control pill, we've got condoms, we've got, you know... Um, pull and pray. Pull and pray. We've got the pull and pray method. And we've got all sorts of different um, ways by which we can try to manage when we do and don't have children as a married couple. And so the question comes up, and I would say oftentimes doesn't come up, of is it okay for us to exercise um, that uh, sort of um, personal autonomy over our reproduction? reproduction? And so uh, I wanted to break this down into a couple sort of things. First of all, I want to say up front, as we always say, we don't intend this to be um, a treatise on contraception, right? We're not going to go through every verse in the Bible that deals with this particular topic. We want to just present you with the work that the Lord's done in our lives as a married couple with regards to contraception and give you some things to think about as a couple. Right, so if we can sort of agree to that up front, that's what we're trying to do here. Does that sound okay? Yeah. Yeah, and I would and I would tell you too. Um, we're not, which is probably something you're about to say. We're not dogmatic about this. There's right. nothing in the Bible that says you cannot use contraception. You cannot, you know, purposefully limit your family size that sort of thing so there's nothing hard and fast that says um that says that right 
And um, so I just kind of gave it away where, we, where we're at. But but I would tell you too that that this is an area that I struggle with in my faith with the mm. Lord. So um, so we're talking about it, but but also understand that this is definitely something that I still struggle with, and I struggle with more as we have more children. Right. Which this is super real for us right now, because if you're tuning into this down the road and you don't know where we were at when this episode came out in February of 2022, we just within the last three days days had our fifth child. Um, And so this is something that's it's real for us uh, right now and and probably is for you, too, if you're a a married couple. So I wanted to start by talking just briefly about a couple of the arguments that I hear out there with regards to contraception. One of which is, excuse me, that you cannot be against contraception. So, so we can just, we, we can not bury the lead, right? Andrea and I personally believe that it's not right for us to use contraception within our marriage. Um, now, right now, I'm specifically <laughs> not including natural family planning and I'm talking about using some form of medicine and or medical device to prevent children. Um, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit more detail here in a minute so that it makes a little bit more, hopefully a little bit more sense. But one of the things that I've heard is that you can't be against contraception if you're not also against medicine in general because as the logic in this particular situation went you know god gave someone the logic and mental and intelligent ability to be able to come up with all sorts of different medications and those same sort of uh, abilities were used to be able to come up with all with contraception how do we feel about that? Well, uh, we believe in medicine, so right. So, um, you know, I think that there's a an onus on a person or parent to be careful with medicine, and we should be living our lives in a healthy way so that we don't. We don't rely on on medicine or science to keep keep us ticking if because we're just making unhealthy choices. Sure. But um, yeah, I mean, medicine is an amazing thing that that we've discovered and mm-hmm. and um, you know we try to be careful with using it intentionally and um, making sure that what the things that we're using have been well researched and all that sort of thing you know right um, but there's a difference between medicine to heal your body and s- using something to prevent what God calls a blessing right and using something to prevent um, Yeah, to prevent children and and to put a stopper in the faith that I might need to have. Mm. That's good. Let's let's actually explore both those um, for just a moment. So the first thing that you said was mentioning children as a as a blessing from the Lord. Psalm one twenty seven three through five says, "This is the ESV version. Uh, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord." The fruit of the womb, a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the children of one's youth. Blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gate. Uh, So, when we think about children, we have to, we have to, if we're going to believe in the Bible as the word of God, we have to land on the reality that children are a blessing that the Lord gives to us. So when we choose to, 
uh, use contraception and put things in the way to prevent that from happening, then how do we not look at that as telling the Lord that his blessings are aren't good enough for us or the timing isn't right for those blessings or we don't want them or whatever the case may be. Right. And, uh, as you know, in this particular verse, it specifically says, blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them. There's actually blessings promised to you for having, for filling your quiver with children. And so, what is a quiver considered full? <laughs> I, I'll, I'll Google that. Okay. <laughs> the, the second thing that you said, uh, I also want to address as we talk about this. So this is really the big thing for us. If we're going to be honest when we think about contraception, this is in the scope of humanity a relatively new idea. So I just I want you to think for yourself really about the question of someone asking you how many children do you want to have or the question of do you want to have any children those questions I mean really let's think about that logically for a moment as Christians who believe that God is sovereign right and 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 omnipotent he's all powerful he's sovereign he's in control of all things and yet we want to flippantly say well god you're in control of everything in my life but obviously not this area because we have contraception Mm -hmm. right and and that's really i think what got you and i first started thinking about this is even within christian communities it's like a no-brainer right like well of course you're going to decide when you do and don't have children right like there was never really any question in the circles that we were running in there was there wasn't a lot of at least we weren't hearing a lot of people that were even thinking about this question. Yeah, so we came to a point where we felt like the Lord was telling us, um, should you really be asking that question like that? How many children do we want and when do we want to have them? Or should you be asking, Lord, how many children do you want us to have and when do you want us to have them? you know in a in a open-handed way like you're going to tell us how many children you want because we're not going to we're not going to be using birth control to prevent that right. and the timing of those children is going to be up to you because again we're not going to be using any birth control to to prevent that so then obviously it's the lord's will because he's we believe he's sovereign and we believe that he, he chooses life for us when he chooses life for us. And so our children come to us when the Lord wants them to, um, because he's, because he's making that happen. And so the question flipped for us then to more of a, do we have faith that, do we have faith to give enough to give this over to the Lord? Right. And, and that's that's the way that I want to challenge you and your spouse or, or if you're single <clears throat> for you to be thinking about this in a future marriage that the Lord may provide for you. In Hebrews 11 verse 1 it, it is really the God's definition of faith. It says, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Assurance is like certainty right it's the certainty of the things that you hope for and the conviction that means the rock solid belief right if you're if you're if it's a a conviction of something right i mean when when people are convicted in court what what that term is being used to say is that the jury of their peers are convicted are convinced that that this person is guilty of whatever the crime is that they've been uh, you know, accused of by the state or, or whomever's bringing it. So it's the conviction, the beyond a reasonable doubt, if you will, of things not seen. Well, what kinds of things not seen are we talking about? 
Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb a reward. Like arrows in the hand of an arrow are the children of one's youth. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior. Right, like, thank you. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the children of one's youth. Blessed is the man or woman who fills his quiver with them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gate. I mean, is that, is that, can that be a thing not seen for us as a married couple? Blessed, you know, we will be blessed if we have a quiver full of children. Right. It's really easy for us in America where there's a lot of keeping up with the Joneses and got to make ends meet. And right now we're in the starter home. And then in two years we have a plan to be in the middle home. And then four years after that, we have a plan to be in the bigger home. And then in this home, and then we got that home. And then there's this car and then that job and then this promotion. And then we got all the stuff, right? The question is, do we have the faith to live out our marriage as God calls us to do it? family life as God calls us to do it. Do we have the faith in him? Right now, does that mean that you might not hit all the markers that you had as a family about this house and then this house and then this car and then this job? Yeah. Yeah, that might, right? I mean, that, that might be a reality. God's plan might be different than your plan. But again, now this brings us to really the crux of the question, which is, where are you going to land? Is it more important for you to allow God to bring his plan to fruition in your life? Or is it more important that you're in control of making these kinds of decisions with regards to your job, with regards to your family size, with regards to your finances? Are we willing to really truly give those over to the Lord and say, look at God, we're going to have sex because she's hot and uh, you've, you know, given her to me as my wife and, and I'm so glad to. and on, well, right. But, but yeah, but I, nobody wants to go, well, we're going to have sex because God said, oh, right. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I spoiler, kind of I want to have sex with you. Like I, I want that. Um, and I'm I mean, so that's, grateful that's that really that's not the way I meant it. I'm, I'm so grateful that God gave us this blessing. And so the question is when we, have sex together are we willing to give the consequences of that over to the lord and on the conviction of things not seen are we going to have the conviction that god's plan is best for us Um, and you know look I, i don't mean this to sound like an easy thing because man babe how many times shoot just in the last three days when my parents or your parents had the kids and we just had easton did we go, man, imagine if we only had one child, how much money we'd have, how yeah, much time easier. we'd have, how much, you know, all these different things we would have. I mean, we recognize it, right? It's, it's not that we're like just floating around, you know, on this cloud of holiness. Yeah, or that we love the craziness it, of five kids all the time. No, you know. right. That's that's exactly no. It's that's <laughs> right. Like or endless disciplining, or you yeah, know, whining, crying. or crying, yeah, or it's not like we thrive on that. Right. I mean, we've got currently like twenty steps away from me an exterior window of our house that is broken because a four-year-old on a whim threw a toy at it. Right. I mean, is that? expensive to fix yeah we gotta we gotta fix it right we had to discipline our son in what's appropriate and not appropriate in the house right i mean these are all things but but again for us it boils down to are we willing to exercise faith as the assurance of things hoped for what do we hope for well i guess you can speak for you but for me I hope that when we get to the end of our lives, that the Lord will say, you're blessed, right? I have blessed you for the faith that you have. The rest of, of Hebrews 11, man, I'd love to just read through it if we had the time. It goes through all of the different, by faith, it says the phrase by faith 20 plus times. 
By faith, Abel did this. By faith, Enoch did this. By faith, Abraham. By faith, Moses. By faith, Isaac. And it goes through all the all these acts of faith that these people had. And it's inspiring to me. Um, and I hope that when I get to the end of my life, at least in the area of our family, as it's written, the, the Lord would write, by faith. Nathan and Andrea allowed me to live out my plan for their family. Um, And we're not good in all areas of this, but it's my prayer that we would give up our desire for autonomy, our desire to be in control and give that over to the Lord that we profess is our savior and master right our lord that's what lord means right our master um and it isn't easy um but it's worth it for me to give up my desire for control in this area to just let the lord do his work Um, and for us that means not taking steps as a couple to try and dictate to the lord when he can and cannot bless us with a child Anything you would add to that, babe? I may breastfeed for longer because it <laughs> because it delays fertility. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, kind of. That's maybe been a thought in the past, but um. But again, that's not a full. See, to me, that's different, right. and so, I, that's probably so a whole different episode we could have. But yeah, you know. So we've chosen that. We we believe that for us, using. Um, any non-natural, any medicinal barrier, whatever form of birth control isn't right for us. We've never done natural family planning, but I'm not against that. And Mm -hmm. I think Nathan agrees with that. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we've had years of, of really flushing this out. In our, right. in our marriage and right. our faith with the Lord. So right. there's even still some areas that we're like, yeah. and natural family planning was one of them where Nathan's like, for a while, he was like, I don't know how I feel about that. And I was pretty sure how I felt about that. But, you know, it's, again, it's just choosing. I want to do what's right by, by the Lord, but I also don't want to go overboard with something that he's like, I didn't ever tell you that. Right. So, um, I think God, you know, God made women's bodies in a way that's very rhythmic and our fertility is, is rhythmic Mm -hmm. and he made it pretty obvious, um, with the way our bodies work about when we're fertile and when we're not. Yep. And you can choose to pay attention to those things. And, um, you know, I think that's an amazing way that God made our bodies. And so... I think natural family planning is a great way to to uh, help in your family yeah. planning. Yep. And but also say like this is not foolproof, and it's and it's. Um, yep. You know, we're I, I'm going to follow the signs, but I'm also going to give up control to the Lord about if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong, and and we're going to have another kid and. So we, like I said, we've never done natural family planning, but it's one thing that we might choose to to use at some point. Right. When I feel like maybe this is the right time. You yeah. Know, maybe we have some freedom with that. Um, but also still having an open hand and saying, you know, God, you're you're in control, and and um, I'm prone to error. <laughs> Yeah, and and the point is that, and, and we'd encourage this for you and your your spouse as well. To make that the most important thing, is that you are submitted before the Lord, and your primary desire is pleasing Him, and not yourself or your schedule or your bank account. And, uh, and spend some time thinking about it as a couple and talking about it as a couple and praying about it and and really, uh, you know, get united on where you guys stand with regards to, you know, the, the, the plan the Lord may have for your life and what if that differs from the plan you might prefer for your life. 
Yeah, All right. I think that kind of covers it. That's right. Would love to hear you guys' opinion. Um, I know uh, even within the circles we run in, this has been a divisive, a divisive uh, debated issue, and that's great, right? I mean, as long yeah, as we're yeah. respectful for with each other and as long as we're basing – you know, our conversation on the truth of God's word, uh, then I'd love to hear any and all opinions with regards to birth control and uh, natural family planning and just family planning in in general. So please feel free to put your comments down in the comments section below. If you're listening to us on audio only, love to have you flip over to Facebook, Marriage by Design podcast, and leave your comments for us there. We respond to every comment that we receive. Uh, and, uh, and man, we learn a lot from, from you guys as well on the comments, the, the thought out comments that you leave. Yeah. All right. Thanks for joining us. All right, guys. Difficult topic. All right, guys, have a great week. We will see you on Thursday for another Family Friday. And remember, God is for your marriage. Hey, thanks for joining us on Marriage by Design. If you were impacted by this video, like it by hitting the thumbs up below. Also, don't forget to subscribe. And once you subscribe, hit the bell icon so you can be notified when new episodes release. Excellent. Also, one of the huge pillars of our show is interactivity between us and you. So we would love you to comment down in the comments below if you have thoughts about this video or if you have questions or other things you'd like to, like to see considered in the future. In addition, if you'd like, you can email us. That's marriagebydesignpodcast at gmail.com. We're also on Instagram at marriagebydesignpodcast, or you can find us on Facebook by searching Marriage by Design Podcast. Finally, if you want to, you can tweet at us. We do have a Twitter account. That is at marriagexdesign. Thanks, and have a great day.